For normal in-flight operations, all required electrical power is provided by two engine-driven generators. A third generator is driven by the APU. It is equal in size and capacity to either engine-driven generator. Any two of these three generators meet all electrical requirements. With only one generator available, some low-priority items, such as the galleys, automatically shut down. Now let's operate the system. Let's begin with the airplane secured and external power disconnected. Controls for the electrical system are located on the overhead panel. With all electrical power switched off, the main battery still continues to power items that require continuous power through the hot battery bus. Turn on the battery. The on indication in the battery switch appears. The main battery discharge and APU battery discharge lights indicate the batteries are being discharged. And the battery bus is now powered. Now apply power to the standby system. Turn the standby power selector to auto. With standby power available, the minimum essential instruments and systems necessary for safe flight are powered. Now let's connect ground power to the airplane. The available light indicates external power is connected to the airplane and is of usable quality. The schematic on the right represents the functions of the electrical system panel. Now push the external power switch on the panel to connect external power to the main airplane electrical system. The on light indicates external power is connected to the airplane's main electrical system. The two main AC buses are distribution points from which electrical power is distributed to all airplane systems. The APU generator can also power the main buses prior to engine start. The APU generator is available anytime the APU is running. The APU generator on enunciation indicates the switch is in the normal operating position and the generator breaker is armed for automatic operation. Push the APU generator control switch to move it to the off position. Notice that the off light illuminates and the on indication disappears. The off light also illuminates when the breaker opens due to a fault situation that is covered in a later lesson. Return the APU generator switch to the on position. In this example, the APU is running and the APU generator switch is on. The APU automatically powers the main buses when external power is disconnected. Connect the APU generator to the system by disconnecting external power. Notice that APU power replaces external power. The external power on light extinguishes. Re-establish external power. The only indication of the change from APU power to external power is the addition of the on enunciation in the external power switch. Each main engine generator and its drive unit are housed in a single case and share a common oil supply. This combined unit is called an Integrated Drive Generator, or IDG.
Each IDG is controlled by a generator control unit, which provides automatic control functions and system protection. The generator control switches automatically connect the IDG to the main buses. The generator control switches remain in the on position for all normal operations. In this position, the on is in view and the breakers are armed for automatic operation. The off light illuminates when the breaker is open. Note this is different than the APU switch, which only illuminates with a fault or when the switch is turned off. Now let's start the ride engine. The IDG begins to rotate to operating speed. The generator breaker closes. And the right generator off and drive lights extinguish. The right generator now powers the right main bus. At the same time, external power automatically disconnects from the right bus and only supplies power to the left main bus. When the left engine is started, the left bus tiebreaker opens and the left main bus is powered by its own generator. The external power automatically disconnects from the tie bus and the APU generator automatically connects to the tie bus. Each main AC bus powers one utility bus. Switches for the utility buses are located here. For normal operation, the bus tie switches are left in auto. In auto, the bus tie breakers keep both main buses powered at all times from any available source in a priority order. The first priority is the associated engine generator when available. Second is the APU generator. And third is the opposite engine generator. External power is the only AC power source not automatically selected. You must apply it manually. Note that both bus tiebreakers are open whenever the IDGs are powering their respective buses. Push the left bus tie switch to position it off. Notice the auto annunciation disappears. And the isolation light illuminates. The left bus tiebreaker is locked open with the switch off. Faults associated with the isolation lights are covered in another lesson. However, notice that even though the right bus tiebreaker is the right bus tie isolation light remains extinguished. The isolation lights always remain extinguished when the bus tie switches are in auto and the bus tie breakers are performing their normal automatic operation. Reset the left bus tie switch and notice that auto is again enunciated. Both engines are now running and both engine generators are powering their associated bus. The only indication on the electrical panel is that the generator off lights and generator drive lights are extinguished.
The electrical panel is now configured for flight. External power is disconnected. Notice in this normal flight configuration, all electrical panel lights are extinguished. The APU may be shut down. The system uses two power sources to keep the buses powered unless only one power source is available. Any one generator has sufficient capacity to supply all flight loads. The airplane automatically performs a load shed to prevent overload or to reduce an existing overload condition. If only one power source is available, load shedding removes non-flight related loads. The galleys and utility buses are automatically removed. The utility buses power passenger entertainment systems and recirculating fans. If an overload condition occurs, first all galleys are shed, and then the associated utility bus. Now, look at the automatic switching that takes place during the normal shutdown procedure. You have arrived at the ramp. The APU is running and external power is available. Let's shut down the left engine. When the fuel control is moved to cutoff, the IDG disconnects. The engine generator breaker opens, the left bus tiebreaker closes, and the APU powers the left bus. The right bus is still powered by the right engine generator. When the right engine is shut down, the right bus tiebreaker closes, and the APU automatically powers the right main bus. To keep the main buses powered, Select external power prior to APU shutdown. Notice that external power now powers the right main bus and the left main bus. Now turn the APU off. If the APU is not available, select external power prior to engine shutdown. Since this is not a through flight, the airplane is secured and external power is disconnected. The only remaining source of power is the batteries. In addition to the previously mentioned systems, the batteries power the standby power system. The passenger address and interphone system. and fuel quantity system. Now complete the power down. Turn off the standby power system and battery. All electrical power is now shut off, except those items continuously powered by the hot battery bus. Battery power is available to four distribution buses, which make up the battery standby system. The hot battery bus is connected directly to the battery and always powered. The hot battery bus powers all equipment that requires continuous power, such as these items. 
Turn on the battery. The battery switch connects the batteries to the battery bus. The main battery discharge light and the APU battery discharge light illuminate to indicate the batteries are being discharged. Now establish power to the standby buses. Turn the standby power selector to the auto position. Battery power is applied to the standby DC bus and through a static inverter to the AC bus. The standby bus off light extinguishes. This light will illuminate if power is lost to either of the standby buses or if the switch is turned off. The standby buses power the standby instruments. Captain's RDMI, the instrument panel floodlights, left VHF radio, and left VOR. In auto, the battery standby system transfers its power source from the battery to the left and right AC buses when they are powered. This is accomplished by each main bus powering a transformer rectifier converting the AC power to DC. DC power from the transformer rectifier is distributed through the left and right DC buses. These buses are connected by a DC bus tiebreaker, normally open. Both bus tiebreaker switches control the DC bus tie and must be in the auto position for the DC tiebreaker to operate if power is lost to either of the DC buses. Normally, the left DC bus powers the battery bus and the standby DC bus. The left main AC bus powers the standby AC bus. Power from the right bus powers the ground service bus. Alternate power sources for the ground service bus are external power and APU generator power. The ground service bus powers the battery chargers. There is one charger for the APU battery and one for the main battery. As a result, all four buses in the battery standby system are powered from the main buses with the capability of receiving their power from the battery. Now turn the battery off. With the battery off, all four buses still receive power from the main buses. The battery is no longer available to provide backup to the battery standby system. Turn on the battery. The battery switch is left on during all normal operations. Let's look at the standby power switch selections with the main buses powered. Select battery on the standby power selector. The battery position isolates the standby system from the main buses. AC and DC power are removed. Power to the battery chargers is removed. The batteries are discharging into the standby AC and DC buses. This battery position is only used to perform a standby power test while the airplane is on the ground. Now select off on the standby power selector. In the off position, the off light illuminates and power is removed from the standby AC and DC buses. The battery chargers and the battery bus still receive power from the main buses. Select auto on the standby power selector. Auto is the normal position. Two buses provide power for servicing the airplane, the ground handling bus and ground service bus. 
There are no controls for the ground handling bus. The bus is automatically powered when external power is plugged in. The auxiliary power unit can power the ground handling bus if external power is not available. When external power is plugged in and the power from it meets minimum quality standards, the available light illuminates. The ground handling bus powers the cargo compartment systems, cargo compartment lights, maintenance access lights, and fueling systems. The bus is not powered in flight. The ground handling bus is also powered by the APU when the airplane is on the ground. Now let's look at the ground service bus. The ground service bus is for cabin service personnel. The ground service bus powers loads needed both on the ground and in the air. It powers cabin lights and outlets. Battery chargers for the main and APU batteries, miscellaneous cabin and system loads. and the left forward fuel pump, which supplies fuel to the APU. When external power is the only source of power, and the main buses are not powered, a ground service switch at the attendance panel at door 1 left can be used to power the ground service bus. Normally, the captain's flight instruments are powered by the left main AC bus, and the first officer's flight instruments are powered by the right main AC bus. When both bus tie switches are set to auto, the bus tie system operates automatically to maintain power to both main buses. In the event of a power loss, the flight instrument transfer buses transfer to the opposite main AC bus. During normal operation, the left and right DC buses are isolated. If there is a loss of power on one of the DC buses, the DC bus tiebreaker automatically closes to provide continuous DC power to the affected side. The DC bus tiebreaker closes to keep both DC buses powered. Both AC bus tie switches must be in auto for the DC bus tiebreaker to close. There are no controls for the DC system, which is fully automatic. The battery standby power electrical system can supply DC and AC power if there are main AC and DC electrical power system failures, power is supplied to selected flight instruments, communications, navigation systems, and other critical systems. To allow automatic landings with the lowest possible minimums, the electrical system is configured so that each of the autopilots is powered by a separate power source. During approach, the left main system powers the left autopilot. The right main system powers the right autopilot. And the battery standby system powers the center autopilot. The airplane is equipped with a hydraulic-driven generator that can supply power to AC and DC buses. But its output is small and provides less than one-tenth the power of an engine-driven generator. If both main AC buses lose power, the hydraulic-driven generator starts automatically.
The AC output is distributed through the left and right transfer buses. These buses are normally powered from the main buses. The HDG powers the left transfer bus, the standby AC bus, and the captain's flight instrument transfer bus. The first officer's flight instruments are not powered by the hydraulic driven generator. The DC output of the hydraulic driven generator goes to the hot battery bus. The battery bus and the standby DC bus. The hydraulic driven generator's DC voltage may be less than a fully charged battery. Therefore, the battery discharge light may illuminate for up to 30 minutes when the hydraulic driven generator first starts. Equipment available with the hydraulic driven generator operating includes the battery standby system, the captain's flight instruments, the left flight management computer, the flap position indicator, the auto pressure controllers, captain's pitot heat, and some limited lighting in the passenger cabin. There is no time limit for the operation of the hydraulic driven generator. If all the generators fail and the hydraulic driven generator is not operating, the main battery and the APU battery provide 90 minutes of power for the standby power system. The standby power system supplies both DC and AC power, but only to selected flight instruments, communications, and navigation systems, and other critical systems. The equipment available includes the standby instruments, the captain's RDMI, the left VHF, the center ILS, the left VOR, and the passenger address and interphone systems. If the standby bus off-light illuminates and the ICAS advisory message standby bus off displays, either or both the standby AC bus and standby DC bus are unpowered. When the standby power selector is in battery, the main battery and the APU battery will provide standby power for approximately 90 minutes. A fault in a generator causes protection circuits to trip the field and the generator breaker. There is a fault in the left generator. The ICAS displays the advisory message left generator off and the utility buses shed. Pushing the left generator control switch off and on resets the field and fault detection circuits. Reset the left generator. Continue. If the fault was transient, the generator will operate normally after it is reset. An APU generator fault causes the off-light to illuminate and the ICAS advisory message APU generator off appears. Reset is the same as the engine generators. The illuminated left generator drive light and appearance of the ICAS advisory message left generator drive indicate low oil pressure, high oil temperature, or other mechanical faults in the IDG. The IDG should be disconnected to prevent damage. Disconnect the left generator drive by pushing the guarded left generator drive disconnect switch. The drive disconnects mechanically from the engine and cannot be reconnected by the flight crew. Only maintenance action on the ground can reconnect the generator drive. The associated generator is lost for the rest of the flight and the utility buses and galleys are shed.
The APU can be started to provide a second generator. The bus tiebreakers automatically isolate a fault from the rest of the electrical system. The ICAST caution message, left AC bus off, and advisory message, left bus isolated appear, and the isolation and bus off lights illuminate to indicate the left AC bus is off and left bus tiebreaker is locked open to protect the other generators. The beeper sounds to indicate the left AC bus is unpowered. If the APU is running, one attempt to reset the bus tiebreaker is allowed. Reset the bus tiebreaker. The bus tiebreaker successfully reset. The fault was transient. The APU is now powering the left bus. If the bus tie reset attempt fails because the fault remains, the left bus is lost. The upper ICAS screen blanks and the lower ICAS screen displays associated ICAS message. The captain's flight instruments normally receive power from the left bus through a flight instrument transfer bus. With the loss of the left bus, the captain's flight instrument transfer bus switches to the right bus. But this automatic transfer takes place only if the left bus tiebreaker switch is in auto. The DC bus tiebreaker closes to keep the DC buses powered. Recall that both bus tiebreakers must be in auto for the DC breaker to work. There are no flight deck controls for the main DC electrical system. Because AC power from the left system is lost, the standby inverter powers the standby AC bus. Loss of the right bus causes the lower ICAS screen to blank. The first officer's flight instruments normally receive power from the right system through a flight instrument transfer bus. With the loss of the right bus, the first officer's instruments switch to the left AC bus. The right bus tiebreaker switch must be in auto to enable this transfer.